I'm also uh, going to use a few slides to introduce uh, the extrinsic pathway apoptosis. You know, I mentioned to you the mitochondria pathway apoptosis, also called intrinsic pathway apoptosis. And because the, the, the apoptotic uh, signals initiate from the inside of the cell, mitochondria. And the extrinsic pathway is apoptotic signal uh, uh, generated from outside of the cell. Um, in this case, by a group of death-inducing cytokines, such as uh, CD95 ligand, or also called FAS ligand. And these cytokines uh, will bound specific receptors on the cell membrane and activate these receptors by trimerizon. And these receptors have this unique features in, at their C-terminus that they have at their C terminus, they have this domain that's called uh, uh, death domain. And these also are uh, protein protein interaction domains. And these domains, once a bound ligand is able to recruit these adapter proteins, for example, like this FADD fat protein. This fat protein has basically a, a, a protein with two uh, domains linked by a linker region. And the one domain is also death domain. This death domain will, is very similar to uh, this car domain. So they, they form the secret handshake to found its partner. Uh, for example, the fat protein now will get recruited to the uh, uh, receptor, death-inducing receptor. And this fat protein, uh, in addition to the, uh, to the death domain, also have this uh, demonstrated in blue as, as a domain called the death effector domain, also DED domain. I mentioned a little bit earlier that for the caspase 8 and caspase 9, which are two caspases, has two death effector domains, DED domains, at their end terminus. And with the fat recruited to the receptor, the pro-caspase 8 and 10 will also be able to recruit to the receptor through the interactions between the death effector domain. And once the caspase 8 gets recruited to this co receptor complex, also called the disc, for death-inducing signaling complex, and the caspase 8 and 10 will become activated uh, again in, in, in a process that may be similar to the activation of caspase 9 by apoptosome. Uh, that results in the activa activated caspase 8 and 10, which will subsequently cleave and caspase 3 and 7 and cause apoptosis. So in this way, the caspase activation is initiated from the receptor cell surface, and they call it extrinsic pathway, and the uh, uh, caspase activation initiated from mitochondria called intrinsic pathway. And there is one uh, interesting regulator for this uh, extrinsic pathway. It's called FLIP. And this FLIP looks like caspase 8, and it has also has this death effector domain at end terminus, and it has homologous to caspase 8. But the uh, critical uh, enzymatic side, the cysteine, is missing. So this FLIP can be recruited uh, to the uh, disk but because it does not have uh, active size, it cannot function as a caspase 8. So um, if FLIP is overexpressed in cells, um, that they can block the caspase 8 activation. So uh, the previous slide is, uh, is a signal caused by uh, 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 CD95. Um, it's relatively simple. And another uh, important uh, death-inducing cytokine is, is called the tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF alpha. And this cytokine, the signal transduction pathway, is a little more uh, com complex that in addition uh, you know, to form a, a caspase 8 activation complex, and they also able to form a, a signaling complex that signal to activation of NF kappa B. And activation of NF kappa B is actually uh, uh, good for cell survival.
because the target of n of kappa b also including a, a flip. And I showed you before the flip is able to, uh, if, if the level flip is high, it's able to antagonize the caspase activation. And also there are two, two proteins that initially uh, identified in the uh, signaling complex in the TNF receptor is called the CIP1 and 2, um, initially isolated by uh, David Gadell as well as uh, David Wells group. Uh, the CIP1 and 2 are the proteins, uh, are these proteins, uh, one of the proteins in that re uh, receptor complex. And how the, uh, this TNF receptor complex switch from n of kappa b signaling complex, which is pro, uh, which is anti apoptosis pro survival, to uh, a caspase eight activation complex, which is pro death, is still a, a great mystery. And uh, they are the understanding of this particular process should be very important for our understanding of this TNF uh, signaling. The TNF. Uh, alpha is uh, uh, very much relevant to, uh, to many human disease, you know, for example, uh, neutralizing antibodies or uh, soluble receptors for TNF alpha is widely used for uh, treatment of uh, autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis. So that gives me a, a, a good uh, uh, opportunity to introduce this IAP family of proteins. So the CIAP1 and 2 in here uh, is uh, first isolated in the uh, TNF receptor complex. And in human genome, now we know there are again a whole family of uh, IAP proteins. And the reason that we know they are IAPs, because they all share the signature domain called bird domains for a baclovirus IAP repeat domains because this IAP protein, the, the function of IAP was first uh, described uh, at, in, the, in the baculovirus insect cell system uh, by Lois Miller's group at the University of Georgia a few years ago. And these bird domains are again, this, uh, uh, signature domains, and they often present in multiple repeats in the IAPs, for example, both XIAP CIP1, CIP2, NAIP has multiple three bird domains at their end terminus. And there are also uh, IAPs such as MLIAP, uh, which is highly expressed in melanoma cells, as Heinz gets its name, only have a single bird domain. And in several IAP molecules at the C terminus, they also have a ring finger domain. Um, as you may know, the ring finger domain is one of the, uh, the three described uh, ubiquitin E3 ligase uh, that can uh, ubiquitin substrate and it causes turnover. Uh, and several IAPs also have this uh, CAR domain in the middle of, of, of its protein. And the exact function of this CAR domain are still uh, not well understood. The best studied IAPs is actually this uh, so-called XIAP. And now we know the XIAP, which the reason they call the XIAP because they are encoded by the X chromosome. Uh, the bird domains of XIAP, particularly bird 3, which is the third bird domain, and bird 2, the second bird domain, is able to directly uh, bound uh, caspase 9 and caspase 3 respectively and inhibit its activity. The other uh, birds in the other IAPs uh, are still not very well characterized. But the function of this, uh, the IAPs uh, and the regulation of the IAPs um, was the initial insight is actually come from the uh, genetic study in uh, fruit fly. So uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, Herman Steller's group at MIT at that time, uh, isolate uh, a, a mutant fly they called H99. And in this uh, uh, mutant fly, uh, if you radiate these fly embryos, and in a wild type flies, you will see this, uh, you know, 
massive uh, apoptosis as demonstrated by this uh, uh, staining. And, but in this H99 uh, embryos, and you don't see this apoptosis because they are missing apoptosis inducing uh, protein that is uh, deleted from this H99 uh, region. So they found there are three proteins, uh, transcripts, uh, that get deleted in this H99 mutant, and they called these uh, proteins uh, Reaper, Grimm, and HIT. But what was interesting about these three proteins is, the, uh, first of all, the, the three protein doesn't show much homology, except at its very end terminus, and the significance will become clear later. Um, but the rest of the protein is not homologous to each other. And also, uh, for, a lot, for, for quite a while, uh, they, there's no uh, mammalian homologous protein to either reprogram and hit. So, uh, it's not clear whether the function of these proteins, three proteins, although they are critically important for apoptosis in C. elegans, whether they are conserved in, uh, in higher organisms like, uh, like mammals as well. Uh, but the function of these reprogram hit is, is known that they can counter uh, the IEP uh, proteins. They can counter the function of IEPs. So um, a few years ago, that uh, in uh, in an essay that for a caspase activation, uh, we uh, actually identified another protein that we called SMAC. And this protein also independently discovered by David Vos group, and they call it Diablo. And this SMAC protein, the sequence listed here, and it's a, a, we realized early on that it's a, it's a mitochondrial protein, and it's nuclear encoded mitochondrial protein, so at its end terminal, it has this typical mitochondria targeting sequence. And this sequence will be uh, responsible for taking this protein that is made in a cytosol to mitochondria. After they are getting in the mitochondria, the mitochondria targeting sequence will be cleaved. So they generate the, this new N terminus. So the mature SMAC protein uh, will have started with this ADPI. And we uh, isolated this protein as another pro as as an activity that will will uh, promote caspase three activation. And independently, David Vos group identified this protein as one of the proteins that interact with XIP. So putting this together, it's become quite clear that this protein is uh, just like reprogram and hit in Drosophila, is mammalian IEP antagonists, and is a mitochondrial protein. So the, the molecular mechanism of this, uh, uh, this protein is uh, become uh, uh, clear by uh, biochemical as well as structure analysis. And here is a model uh, generated by uh, uh, Yi Gong Shi's group in Princeton that is showing how these uh, uh, SMAC counter the IEPs. And the model is based on a, a co-cross structure of the BIRD3 domain of XIP with the SMAC. As you see here, the SMAC protein is a, is a homodimer with uh, each monomer has a, uh, this uh, three alpha helix bundles. The N-terminal part of the um, SMAC is unstructured before it's bound the bird domains of uh, uh, I, XIP. Uh, but once it's bound, they can uh, they, they show this uh, uh, structure. And what is really uh, interesting and surprising was the interaction is limited to the first four amino acids of uh, the IEP molecules. And the rest of the molecule seems only function as a, as a structural motif. The functional motif is limited to the four amino acid. Will this N-terminal alanine play the most critical role in this interaction? Because you see here, this is a, a, the, the BIRD3 domains of XIP. The alanine uh, stick into this, this hole and provide the most of the bounding energy. And 
the hole is only big enough for alanine and glycine to get in. The, the, the other amino acid is too big. And the alanine also provides uh, the, the critical hyd additional hydrogen bonding that the glycine couldn't. So the alanine turns out to be the only amino acid that able to mediate this critical protein between action. And this alanine, as you remember, is hidden um, from uh, uh, is hidden in the in the protein when it's first translated in a cytosol. It's not able to bind IAP. But only when the protein gets transported into the mitochondria, will this mitochondrial targeting sequence get cleaved, then does this alanine get exposed. But now this SMAC protein gets trapped inside the mitochondria, just like cytochrome C, and all the IEPs is in the cytosol, so they are not able to interact. So only when the, the cells receiving apoptotic stimuli and this uh, SMAC protein come out of the mitochondria, and they can counter the IAP proteins. Another, uh, uh, there are a couple of interesting implications for this finding that the, the interaction between SMAC and IAP is limited to the f uh, first few amino acids. Um, remember, I told you that for the longest time, um, there's, we couldn't find homologous proteins to reprogramming the hip. Although the function of these uh, SMAC and reprogramming the hip seem to be very similar. And also, there are no much sequence homology between reprogramming the hip themselves. So, and after knowing that the interaction, the, the, the function of these proteins is only limited to the few amino acids that in terminus, the rest of the protein are all only play a structural role. Now everything seems to be rather clear. Uh, again, when we line up the, the, the N terminus of a SMAC with the N terminus of, of this Reaper agreement hit, and you can see is indeed they are actually quite homologous at this N terminus. Um, the difference is for the SMAC, because it's a mitochondrial protein. The, the alanine is hidden uh, by the uh, mitochondrial targeting sequence, but for the Ripper and Grim and the Hit, uh, the alanine followed immediately after the initiation methionine. And as you know, in many proteins, the first methionine get processed, get cleaved off when the protein get finally translated. And these proteins are often uh, only transcribed when the cell is destined to die. And also, based on these homology, the very at the very end terminus, uh, now the fourth protein, which is also localized in this uh, close to this H99 region, but never been, it hasn't been, hadn't been identified before. Just simply based on this homology, now this protein sickle was also identified that also play in a functional, a functional uh, redundant uh, and similar role as reprogramming here. And it's also based on this uh, you know, similarity with AVPI. Another mitochondrial uh, mitochondria protein called OMI or HTRA2 also have this N-terminus that is uh, similar to this, uh, this has in terminus of AVPS, which may also play a role in counter IAPs. So, uh, this is my uh, uh, final slides, and I, today we discussed uh, two pathways uh, from um, multiple organisms that play, uh, that execute apoptosis. Um, the intrinsic pathway uh, started from mitochondria and, and regulated by the BCL2 family proteins, um, and there are also uh, extrinsic pathways uh, started by the uh, death-inducing cytokines, such as FAST or CD95. There are also two others, uh, DR4 and DR5, death receptor 4 or 5, which are the receptor for another death-inducing cytokine called TRAIL, uh, also a TNF receptor. Um, so for the intrinsic pathway that can be activated by uh, radiation and as well as uh, transforming an, uh, oncogenes and, and many of the currently used the chemotherapeutic drugs. And I uh, give you this uh, uh, deoxynucleotide analog as an example that also function 
uh, at the apoptosome formation. So um, at least there are uh, you know three uh, um, at three different uh, um, positions of these pathways that the the, the new uh, anti uh, specific apoptosis inducing uh, uh, drugs for potential chemotherapy is uh, being developed. I already uh, mentioned to you that the deoxynucleotide analogs that uh, developed by Dennis Carlson at all at the UTSD that used to uh, substitute, uh, that, that can substitute deox ATP to promote uh, apoptosome formation efficiently. And also this uh, BH3 only protein, uh, such as uh, the BAD interaction with, with BACs, and these interactions, this interaction is mediated by this BH3 uh, peptide, and there are uh, small molecules that are being developed um, with the, the, the leading group uh, in Abbott Laboratory and led by Steve Fasick, that they have the small molecule uh, that can disrupt the interaction between um, uh, bags and and, uh, and bad, um, so that will make uh, to, uh, the bags active and, and, and promote apoptosis. And this is also being tried uh, in 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 for cancer therapy. And the third example is uh, SMAC memetics and. I showed you that the, the SMAC protein, the, the, the functional motif, is only for amino acid. And now there are many groups trying to uh, de de develop small molecules, chemicals, that mimic the four amino acid of SMAC, AVPI, and for uh, cancer therapy. And why this is uh, uh, so important? Uh, as because IAP molecules like XIAP and CIAP1 and 2 are able to block both intrinsic and extrinsic pathway at the multiple sites. And the SMAC protein or SMAC memetics will able to uh, eliminate this inhibition. And for the native SMAC protein, it's normally inside the mitochondria and it's subject to the regulation of BCL2 family proteins. And, and in many cancer cells, the BCL2 family protein is overexpressed and the mitochondria is, is very well protected. And, but if you have a SMAC memetics, you add to the cell, it can pass the cell membrane directly and they will bypass the mitochondria regulation by BCL2 and they will make uh, they will take out LIP inhibitions on both receptor as well as the, the downstream caspases that will make these cancer cells very sensitive, super sensitive to these apoptotic stimuli and potentially make the, uh, the, the therapies by either death receptor uh, uh, ligand as well as other uh, chemotherapeutic drugs much, much more effective. And hopefully in the near future we will see uh, uh, drugs that are based on these, our understanding of our apoptotic pathway and make through the clinic and benefits patients. Thank you.